this paper of Michael Faraday's from 1832 was in fact the first of a series of 30 papers that he published in the transactions over the course of more than two decades. They were all called the, um, Experimental Researches in Electricity, but it's the first one that was the most profound because that's the one that, in which he first describes how you can generate electricity from a magnetic field and motion. It's the experiment that we all do at school. You push a bar magnet in and out of a, a coil of wire and that wire is connected to a galvanometer which measures current and you see the needle flicking. It's so clearly and beautifully written. The way he describes the experiments are wonderful. Uh, it, it wasn't a difficult job figuring out exactly what his thought processes were when he was designing these experiments. And, and you get this sense of real sort of pleasure and surprise. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the needle moving far more than it should do. You know, when I put the magnet in the wire, you know, you, you mm -hmm. sense his excitement at the time of discovering something that, you know, yeah. he was seeing for the very first time in history. I mean, there were others before him, uh, Ampere, mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, people like um, Volta, um, who, who, who invented the, the, the voltaic battery in, in 1799. Mm -hmm. So the people who are doing research with electricity and they, they understood how to gen that, that you could generate magnetism from electricity. But the big thing was, can you get electricity from magnetism? That was the big breakthrough. Mm -hmm. That was what was so earth shattering about Faraday's work. Um, there was another American contemporary of his, Joseph Henry, who also actually came up with, um, mm. did experiments on yeah. electromagnetic induction at the same time. Was his work as well documented? How do we know that um, he actually came up with how to, uh, well, well, inductance first? Henry s did publish work. Mm. He did do essentially what Faraday had done. Mm -hmm. Faraday beat him to it. In fact, Faraday was very concerned that it's around about that time in the early 1830s that Royal Society decided to be a bit more rigorous about the refereeing process of what got published in, mm -hmm. in, in the transactions. And Faraday was very nervous that if they were going to take months and months over this, someone else would beat mm -hmm. him to it. Yeah. As, it as it was, he did get his work out in, first appears in April 1832, yeah. and he's just, he pips Henry, Joseph Henry mm -hmm. to the post and it goes down in the history that it was Faraday's discovery. You talked about a series of papers. Um, I read that one follows on from the other. It's kind of like a story, maybe. Um, does that kind of thing really exist now in publishing, do you think? Or is it always uh, well-defined papers which read, you can read them individually rather than Yes, I, I, I don't think that happens now. Uh, I think to a very large extent, um, there's this um, culture of publish or perish. So you, come, you, you design an experiment or you come up with an, a, a, a theoretical result and you publish that work quickly and then you move on to something else. It even used to be the case where, certainly in my area of physics, you would publish a short letter to a journal just to get your result out there quickly. Mm -hmm. And then you follow that up with a longer paper where you put in all the nitty gritty details. These days, even that doesn't happen very often, let alone this idea that yeah. over the course of 20 odd years, you publish almost a serialization and then the next experiment I did and then so on and so on. Every time you have a, Faraday had a group of experiments, he'd write them up and submit it to the Royal Society for publication uh, and then move on to the next thing. Uh, I, we don't see that these days. Mm -hmm. If you could say w one sentence to Faraday, what, what would it be? Um, I would say, uh, is he aware that that paper in 1832 changed the world as much as any scientific discovery ever made in human history? Because without that, that paper led to the development of, of, of power generation, electricity generation. And how do we make that electricity? We use exactly the same concept that Faraday describes in this paper. So I say, what do you reckon then? Do I, how does it make you feel, you know, that within just a few years, you transformed humanity's yeah. life on, on, on this planet?